Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our first German class and we're going to do something very German. We start on time. <laughs> so I will start every Saturday morning. I will start on time and please try to be on time if it's possible. I know it's hard. I know the traffic is tight, but that would be great. We got a lot of things to do. So I hope we all have the same book. Should be this book. That's called Passwort Deutsch. Okay, we will work through this book, but however, during class, I put everything on the PPT. Everything we do in class is on the PPT, and so you can redo the exercises in the book. So everything I, most of the things I use in class is taken from the book, and I will give you the page numbers. Okay, um, today we are going to start with some basic stuff, basic introduction. Okay, then let's get started. Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße Kerstin Bohrau. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. And at the end of this very first lesson, you will be able to understand this dialogue and to participate yourself. Okay, so then, the first thing we learn is Guten Tag. Please repeat. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Hallo. Hallo. That sounds already great. So one thing about German that makes it very different from English and especially from Chinese. Um, you somehow you got to tighten your vocal cords. German is a very hard language. If you compare it with English, you say "Good day" in German, "Guten Tag." So you and what you will also hear is I'm, I'm blowing out air very strong when I'm speaking. So this is, um, for example, the German T, like in. No, oh, sorry. Need to go back. Auf Wiedersehen, right? The T in Tag, this one, is not like the Chinese or English T, the soft D, T, but you have to blow out ear. It sounds like T, T. And one way to, to figure out whether you're doing this correctly or not is to put up your hand in front of your mouth and then you should feel some air blowing to your hand. <laughs> or you can even try to take a piece of paper and you can see when I'm saying, when I'm pronouncing it, the piece of paper will move. <laughs> So, and probably in the first weeks of German, you will feel your throat goes a little bit sore because it's, it's hard to pronounce in the beginning. But still, I would suggest don't worry too much about the pronunciation. You will learn that we will practice this over and over again as we speak alone. And if you have any questions, so you can raise your hand and ask me. If there's something you don't understand, just ask. Okay, let's try this together again. Guten Tag. Right. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Then we have some more German greetings, and we will start with Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. That's what we have right now. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Okay. And now you might have heard that the German R is very hard to pronounce. If I pronounce this separately, I will sound like. And this is something, I'm not doing it with my tongue. I'm doing it in the throat, down here. But the good news is, however, if you pronounce the R after a vowel, so if you have O plus R, you don't have to go morgen. You just say morgen. That's a lot easier, and that's the Northern German standard. So don't worry too much about this. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Right. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Right. So this is another feature. The German W is pronounced like in Chinese. It's not English. It's not W. Don't do this. That sounds, that gives you, we don't have a W in German. All we have is V. v. And you can see that my 
upper cheese are on my lower lip when I'm pronouncing this. Wiedersehen. Right. Wiedersehen. Right. Okay. Let's try this all together. Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Auf Wiedersehen. Okay, another feature in German, if you pronounce it like in Guten Abend, you have a D at the end. But another thing that is very, very typical for German, if we have a D at the word ending, it will sound like T. Abend. So you will hear me say Guten Abend. It's just, don't ask me why, that's just the thing we do. And the same is, if, yeah, for, for some other soft vowels, you will hear they sound very hard in German. And actually, German children in school, they have to learn too how to spell this. So this, you won't hear a difference. Okay. But the good news is, still about German, the good news is, you, if you can pronounce it, you can write it. So that's fairly regular. So it's not like English that you pronounce something and you write something completely different. That's rather easy about German. Once you know the rules, how to pronounce it, you will know how to spell it. Okay, then let's see if you remember the vocabulary. Zhao Shang Hao. What's this in German? Guten Morgen. Right. Guten Morgen. Ni hao. Guten Tag. Wang Shang Hao. Guten Abend. Zai Jian. Auf Wiedersehen. Right. Okay, then let's come to the first part of the dialogue. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Wie heißen Sie bitte? And try to keep in mind, if you pronounce this letter, it will be V. 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 Don't go W. It's V. 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 heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße Kerstin Burau. <laughs> of course, you don't. You insert your own name, right? Okay. V. heißen Sie bitte? Bitte. Right. Now another thing. We will come to this later. In German, we have also two forms. So we have Z. That's Lin in Chinese. So, and this is if you don't know somebody, you will you will address them always with Z. We will come to this later, but it's just to to um, tell you a bit about what you are saying. Okay. So this is your verb. Heißen. Heißen. Wie heißen Sie bitte? In this letter, that sounds a bit like a B, but it's actually, we write it like this. So that it's, it's like, like G, it's got a little tail down here. And that's pronounced like double S. S, S. Yeah, that sounds great. We heißen Sie bitte. Right. And another thing that makes German very different from English, so in English, in the final position, you would also pronounce this like S. But in German, it is Z. 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 So the S in the, in, in the um, front position is, is uh, voiced. So you should feel your vocal cords vibrating. Z. Z. In contrast to to this S, it's you, you have no vibration in your vocal cords. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Bitte. Right. Ich heiße Kerstin Burau. Okay, but you don't need to repeat this. Right, then, most of the time, this goes together with the greeting, Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Guten Tag, that's my answer. Ich heiße Kerstin Burau. Okay, so that's my name. Well, we can actually practice pronouncing it. Kerstin Burau. And don't say Burau. I don't like this. <laughs> okay.
Right. So then let's practice this. I'm going to ask you, wie heißen Sie bitte? And you answer. Right. So we practice this a bit. So I'll just start a little introduction. you already find the all what you need to introduce yourself you find right you already can read something in your book you find written talk auf Wiedersehen and tschüss tschüss that's actually very informal you can say the formal way auf Wiedersehen or tschüss tschüss right if you turn to page five in the beginning you have wie heißt du? Ich heiße Philipp. Right, so here we have a lot of introductions, so this is what we just did. Alright, then let's continue. So I will split this up for you, the part of the sentences you have here. So the V is our first question word. And the way we use this actually to English, I will translate it as how. But in Chinese, you just use it, you, you express yourself differently. So it would be Zemma or Shama in, in Chinese. So then we have bitter. And bitter is, um, that's Qing, but we have a lot of um, different ways of using it. It's a very, very good word to learn this. Right, then we have zi, which I said is min, is the polite form. And we have the word ich. ich. And actually, this combination of c and h is pronounced So, you press your tongue up to your, um, up to your, up, um, the upper part of your mouth. Right, that sounds great. So, however, this is in front of I and E. If you have this combination combined with O, combined with U, and combined with A, then it will sound like Right, so this is something you just, but you can tell how you pronounce it, because in front of E, it will always be E. Right. So if you want to practice this sentence, I can give you a very, if you want to practice how to pronounce it. So it's very useful to, to practice the, let's do it here. Ich liebe dich. Ich, ich liebe dich. I see some people grinning, you know what it means. That's I love you in German. So you can use, you can practice the sentence, I love you. Ich liebe dich. Great. So that's a nice way of practicing a language, I think. Okay, then let's see. Heißen. Again, this letter is too, like, 
S, it's pronounced very, very sharp and unvoiced. Ich heiße. Right, ich heiße. Okay, so in German, we do a lot of things to the end of the word. Yeah. So this is why it is very, very important that we hear clearly what you say at the end of a word. And I know in Chinese this is very, very different. For example, the word very in Chinese, hen, you pronounce it, when I hear you say this, when I hear Chinese people speaking this, I, hear, I always hear something like hen. So you, you don't pronounce the N as in German. The, when I really started learning in the very, very beginning of my learning Chinese, I would always say hen. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is the way you got to pronounce German. So if you have the infinitive form of a word, you will have hi sen hi sen And I need to hear this. If I don't hear this N, I think you are saying something different, right? So this is just like if you do not pronounce the tones in Chinese correctly, you're saying something different. And it's the same. We need to hear the endings of the words very clearly. So this ending here, if we have an E at the end of a word, it will be pronounced something like a. Uh, uh. And it's not stressed, but we still need to hear it. You may, when you hear Germans speaking, they sometimes drop it completely. But for you as learners, it's easier to pronounce it in the beginning, because if you don't pronounce it, you will not know how to write it. So in this case, it's like, ich heiße. Ich heiße. Right, ich heiße. Ich heiße. I don't say ich heißen from the very, very beginning. Try to learn this properly because otherwise you will be in a lot of trouble later. So try to learn this from the very beginning, how to pronounce it properly and how it works. It really makes a difference. Okay, one more time. Ich heiße. Ich heiße. Great. A lot better. So then let's practice. Do you remember? How do you say Shama in German? V. V. Right, V. Xing. Bitte. Bitte. Right, Min. Z. Z. Right. Wo. Ich. Ich. Right. Okay. And this one? Zhao. Heisen. Heisen. And so whenever you see in German a verb that looks like this, it would probably, this is the German infinitive. Like in English you have to, to call. So we don't have something in front of the word, we don't. So this one basically corresponds to this ending, right? So this is the infinitive form, heißen. So, and if you say then um, I, ich in German, if you combine it with ich, you will drop the N. Ich heiße. Ich heiße. Right. Heißen, the infinitive, ich heiße. Right. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Now try to answer. Ich heiße. Right. Ich heiße. Right, now, wie heißen Sie bitte? And then for me it would be, ich heiße Kerstin Borau. Right. Borau. So, and this is actually in my name, this is where it gets difficult for you, because whenever you have this R, and it is followed by A, U, O, I, E, or something like this, then it will be actually pronounced like the really hard German R, like <laughs> And so I know this is, it's incredibly hard to do. And don't expect that you can do this tonight. So it will probably take you a few months. But there is a way of practicing it. And because where it is produced in your mouth is very, very close to where you pronounce so you, pr you, you practice saying acha, 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 acha. 
And then if you say this over and over again, you try to go to ah, 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 yeah, yeah. And you can also, well, a lot of people try to gargle. So you take some, you take some water. <laughs> So this is basically what we are doing when we are pronouncing this R. So the little thing in the back of your mouth moves, but without the water. So <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry. It's, you, have, you still have some time to go until people really expect you to pronounce this. Okay, another thing you can see in my name. That's the combination of A and U. And that's AU. AU. Always. No exception. It will always be AU. And that is just like in Niha. In so, AU. This one. A. A. Right. A. AU. And this one will always be I. 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 Right. So we have au, oi, ai. Oi, ai. However, we have, and this is, try not to confuse this, we have this one and we have this combination. And whenever you see this combination, it will be e. Right. So, and here we have something nice because you see two T's. And this makes this E a short one. Bitter. Bitter. So that's just E. And this is E. So this makes it a Z. Bitter. Try to notice the difference between short and long vowels in German because it really, it makes, just like in English, it makes a big difference. So then you might say a completely different word. Okay. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Okay, then let's, let's start again. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Try to answer, try to answer. Okay, what I would like you to do now, just introduce yourself to your neighbor. Do this in German. Ask, ask your neighbor for, for his or her name and introduce yourself. Try to practice. Okay, that already sounds great. So you can already introduce yourself to somebody in German, isn't that? Right. Okay. Now, yeah. Now ask me uh, for my name. Ask me. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße Kerstin Bogau. <laughs> okay. Right. So you remember in the beginning we had this whole dialogue and believe it or not, you already know the first part. So the whole dialogue is an introduction. It sounded like, Guten Tag, wie heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße Kerstin Borau. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. So you already know the first part. So let's continue to the next part of our dialogue. Woher? 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 So again, try to keep in mind the, the, the here. The here. Right. The here. The here. So in this, in the end, whenever you see this in the end, it sounds pretty much like just saying the here. The here. Right. Common. Common. 
word common. common. Then two important vocabularies for this class: Deutschland. Deutschland. Right. Deutschland. Deutschland. China. China. Right. Okay. Here in the beginning, you have China. However, in German, you will hear a lot of people say, especially in the South, they will say China, or you will hear them say China. So don't be confused. That just depends on the area where they come from. But basically, it, it will be China. Right. Deutschland. Right. So here we have Deutsch. That's, it looks pretty much like Chinese. That corresponds to this part, and this land is country. Land. Land. Deutschland. England. Right. Russland. Russland, exactly, right. So this means country, and the good thing about German ears, you will also, you will learn this, that it works, it actually works a bit like Chinese. You don't have to learn as many words as in English, because we combine a lot of words, so that makes it easier. Okay. Yeah, here you have the oi again. Yeah, here you have oi. 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 Deutsch. 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 Right. Deutschland. Deutsch. Right. Okay. So try to translate this for me. Woher? Woher? Right. Lie? Common. 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 Right. Woher? Common. 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 Deutschland. Deutschland. China. China. Right. Okay, now you understand the second part of the conversation. Woher kommen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Right, and here you can see again, here you have this infinitive ending, kommen. But if it's combined with ich, it ends on e. Right? Ich heiße, ich komme. Ich heiße, ich komme. Right. Aus Deutschland. Right. Now ask me where I'm from. Ich komme aus Deutschland. Right. Ask me a bit louder. Woher kommen Sie? Ask me. Ich komme aus Deutschland. Right, that's the next one. Woher kommen Sie? Answer? Ich komme aus China. That is very important for you. If people ask you in Germany, they will ask you, woher kommen Sie? And you have to answer, ich komme aus China. China, right. Ich komme aus China. Komme aus China. Right. Right. Now ask me one more time. Ich komme aus Deutschland. Right. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Und woher kommen Sie? Right. Ich komme aus China. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus China. Right. So you already know a lot of questions you can ask. So if you meet some Germans in the street, you can already ask, Wie heißen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? And the next one, what you don't know yet, Wo wohnen Sie? Right. Wo wohnen Sie? Now, what you can see, so these are your verbs, heißen, kommen, wohnen. Now, I already told you this ending is the infinitive ending, right? And the good, so this is how you will find it in the dictionary. 
The good news is, if you use the polite form Z, it always goes together with the infinitive form. So it's very convenient in German to be polite because you don't have to change the verb. You can simply use the infinitive form. And you can see it here for all three verbs there in the infinitive. Wie heißen Sie? Wie heißen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? Wo wohnen Sie? Wo wohnen Sie? Wo? Wo? Wohnen. Wohnen. Right. So here's another thing about German pronunciation. I already told you, if you have this combination, an I plus E, so it will be a long vowel, E. So and if you have any vowel combined with H, like E, O, O, A plus H, it will also be a long vowel. So here, wohnen. So you have wo, wohnen. Right, that's a long one. So and you never, you don't have to pronounce this H. You don't hear it. It just tells Germans the vowel will be long. So this here, it's not really pronounced, but it makes the vowel long. Wohnen. Right. Wo wohnen. Right, now, ask. Wohne, right? Ich wohne. Ich wohne. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right. Sherry, wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right. Sir, wo wohnen Sie? Great. Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right, so here we have this little exercise. Now ask me where I live. Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right. Okay, so you already have the complete dialogue. You can do a complete introduction already by now. Let's read this all together. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Wie Sie bitte? Ich heiße Kerstin Bora. Well. <lacht> Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Ja, wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Okay, then, Justin, you're my first victim. Let's let's play a little introduction. So I meet you, and you you answer me. Guten Tag, wie heißen Sie bitte? Guten Tag, ich heiße Justin Bauer. Woher kommen Sie? Ich ich komme aus China. Ich komme aus China. Great. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Great. Now I would like you to practice this with your neighbor. Introduce yourself to each other. Okay. Practice speaking a little bit.
Okay, then there is there was a question and that was a good question, great point. Right, we're here. So in this word, this is an exception, right? You have wo plus here. So we will also learn later wo plus hin. And because this is a combination of two words, you have to pronounce it through the H. You say wo here. While in this case, this is only one word, though it is silent. Wo wohnen sie. Okay, and now I still heard some people say "Ich heißen." Right, it's "Ich heiße." Don't say "Ich heißen." I will be very angry if you say this. I will be angry and sad. So try to. This is. It's. It's very, very important to say. Only, only the "E" is in the beginning of "Ich." Ich heiße. Learn this from the start. Ich heiße. Ich wohne. Ich komme. Right. So if you combine it with ich, there is only an e. There is no n at the ending. Right? Ich wohne. Ich komme. Ich heiße. Right. That's and here you can see you can see it's very close to English. You can see the relation between the two languages. If you imagine there was a C here, then it and then it's, it looks almost like English. So in a lot of cases, it's very you can you can use English to to know what the meaning might be in German. Right. Okay. Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße. And then you fill in your name, of course. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in. Right in Shanghai. There you just you insert your own your own um well information. Okay. Guten Tag. Now. Fill in, please. Fill in the brackets. Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie? Right. Wie heißen Sie? Ich heiße Kerstin Borau. Now ask me where I come from. Woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Deutschland. Right. Now ask me where I live. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right. Guten Tag. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Star. Now you are my victim. Answer me. Wie heißen Sie bitte? Ich heiße Star. Great. Woher kommen Sie? Kommen Sie? Now answer. Ich. Ich komme aus China. Right. Wo wohnen Sie? Ich wohne in Shanghai. Right. And please let me encourage you. Practice the pronunciation here. So let's practice this all together, and let's practice this because I do believe a language is meant to be spoken. We don't learn it for the grammar books. We don't learn it for the grammar. We learn it because we want to talk to each other. And even if you watch it at home, if you couldn't make it at home, practice German. And if your mom asks what that you're doing, you got a sore throat. Don't worry. Just keep on practicing. Right. <laughs> Okay, now here I get some sentences that are not in the correct order, and I want you to find the first sentence for me. What is the first sentence? Guten Tag. Right, Guten Tag. The second one. Guten Tag. Another Guten Tag, and then. Woher kommen Sie? And then, of course, ich komme aus Deutschland. Right. Now try this one. Bring it in the correct order, please. Wie heißen Sie? Mein Name ist Hansen. 
is hands and so and the next one would be und wo wohnen sie in frankfurt okay so what you have here this is some people said my name and that's really what it is my name in german but we pronounce it mein name name right in german this one is never a it will always be a a and well this is very important also for german open your mouth i know for chinese people so you can basically you can speak chinese without ever opening your mouth and you can smile all the time when you're speaking chinese but in german nobody will understand you so it's very very important open your mouth and if you go to see a doctor in germany he will say say ah for me because for ah that's when you open your mouth the widest ah Ah, ah, ah. So when you say ah, I want to see your tonsils, right? So it's it's really it's important. Open your mouth. Mein Name, mein Name is Hansen. Hansen. Right. Mein Name is Hansen. Hansen. Okay, then fill in the question words, please. Woher? Right, woher kommen Sie? Wo wohnen Sie? And the next one? Wie heißen Sie? Right. Now, let's come, because if I want you to be punctual, I need to tell you the time, so something very military German. Let's count together. Eins. Zwei. Drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. So, elf. Right. If you know the numbers, you already know a lot about German, and you can learn the numbers to. I uh, practice the difficulties in pronunciation so the things you might not remember for example here you have i eins and this one this might be hardest for you the s that's like in chinese when you say the next time xia ci so it's s and then it's zwei zwei right drei and here you have the long vowel and you can pronounce this like vier fünf so this is another thing you see in german sometimes we have this one a with two dots and o with two dots and an u with two dots right and they are called umlaute right and this in this case it's a from a to e a e now it gets harder this is o and it turns to e u and this is from y o to u u u right so this is what we have in fünf fünf right so and if you try to type this on your computer and you will find out i don't have it on my computer you can simply spell this a and e or o and e or u and e so this is another old way of writing it in german and a german will understand that you are meaning these letters so this one would be this this one would be this and this one would be this right so this is another way of writing it if you don't have the two dots fünf okay so here we have something i told you that you pronounce this like like but in this case it's an exception you have to you have to pronounce it right sex sex and remember that this in the beginning needs to be sex because if you pronounce this unvoiced you are saying sex in german and you don't want to say this so please mind the correct pronunciation sex sieben acht 
Acht. Neun. Neun. Zehn. Zehn. So here you have, in contrast to ich, ich. acht. acht. Right. Neun. Neun. There you get this combination of E and U. Neun. Neun. And here you have another H, which is silent and just lengthens the vowel. Zehn. Zehn. Right. Zehn. Zehn. Okay. Eins. Zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. One more time. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, fünf, fünf. 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 Right. Fünf. Fünf. Next one. Sechs. Sieben. Acht. Neun. Zehn. Right. So let's learn another thing. Die Uhr. Die Uhr. Das ist eine Uhr. Right. So in German we only have one word. Das ist auch eine Uhr. Das ist eine Uhr. Das ist auch eine Uhr. Das ist eine Uhr. So and the way to ask the time, wie, wie spät ist es jetzt? Jetzt. Wie spät ist es jetzt? Right, this is another thing, another point. Whenever you have this combination, S and P, it will be pronounced like sh, sh, spät, sh, spät, always in German, always. We never, we don't have sp, sp, we only have spät, spät, sprechen, right, Spanien, right, wie spät ist es jetzt. So that means, wie spät ist es jetzt? Wie spät ist es jetzt? Es ist zwei Uhr. Es ist zwei Uhr. Right. Wie spät ist es jetzt? Es ist drei Uhr. Right. So you are basically saying it is three o'clock in German. It is, that is it, it is, it is three o'clock. And we don't make the differentiation between clock and watch. Everything is just Uhr in German. Okay, es ist drei Uhr. Now, wie spät ist es jetzt? Ist es. Wie spät ist es? Es ist vier Uhr sieben. Right, so you just say as if, then you insert vier, and those two dots, you just read them as Uhr. Vier Uhr sieben. So you don't need this one simply as if vier Uhr sieben. Vier Uhr sieben. Now try the next one. Wie spät ist es jetzt? Es ist zehn Uhr drei. Es ist zehn Uhr drei. Zehn Uhr drei. Now the next one. Wie spät ist es? Es ist zwei Uhr sechs. Right. Es ist zwei Uhr Sechs. Now the next one. Wie spät ist es? Es ist acht Uhr zehn. Es ist acht Uhr zehn. Right. Wie spät ist es jetzt? Es ist sieben Uhr Es ist sieben Uhr fünf. Right. Wie spät ist es jetzt? Drei Uhr zehn. 
Wie spät ist es jetzt? 6 Uhr 9. Right. Wie spät ist es jetzt? 5 Uhr 10. Es ist 5 Uhr 10. Right. So let's practice this one more time. How do you say good morning? Dao Shang Hao in German? Guten Morgen. Ni Hao. Guten Tag. Guan Shang Hao. Guten Abend. Zai Jian. Auf Wiedersehen. Right. So, but before we continue with this, let's go to. You will learn one more import, important word that is Pause. Pause. Please repeat. Pause. Oops. Pause. No. And that's why I'm. Act Oops. Why I'm actually saying this. Pause is not pause. 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 Okay. Let's have a five minutes break and then we will continue.